Dear God, thank you for letting us be here today. I just want to praise your holy name. Just thank you for all that you do, Lord Jesus. And forgive us for all of the sins that we commit. We commit sins by thought, word, and deed. And they're not in concert with your way, but we, we want you to forgive us, Lord Jesus. We want to trust and try to obey you, Lord Jesus. Just really, just thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for our pastor and his family. Thank you for the evangelist who's going to bring the word tonight. And may it touch our hearts, Lord Jesus. We just thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us and, and this church and this congregation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So many nights I've cried For better days I've prayed for But through it all I know the sun is going to shine if I hold out. The sun is going to shine if I hold out. Sometimes I feel alone. No one around to call on. I must endure, for I know oh, the sun is going to shine if I hold out. Yes, you will. The sun is going to shine if I hold out. We've been made into. No matter what it looks like, 
just keep the faith. Don't you let go about your faith. Oh, 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 the sun is going to shine. Oh, 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 the sun is going to shine. Yes, he is. The sun is going to shine. If I just keep the faith, the sun is going to shine. If I just believe, the sun is going to shine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sun is going to shine. Oh, the sun is going to shine. Oh, the sun is going to shine. Yes, he the sun is going to shine If I hold out The sun is going to shine If I hold out Praise the Lord, everybody. We are so very pleased to be here on this Wednesday night, um, joining you over the airways, social media, Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. We're just really, really um, excited to be able to continue to share the Word of God with you. If you can, if you're joining um, by social media, we ask that um, that you can just press the share button. This helps to um, bless others as the broadcast populates on your news feed. Others may be able to hear a word um, and be able to connect with Zion Travelers. Um, we're called to spread the gospel to all of the corners of the world, and that's one way that you can help us evangelize and help us to disciple and just get the word out that God is still God. He is sovereign. He still sits on the throne. And so since you're going to scroll on Facebook anyway, you may as well hit play and get the word on tonight. So um, we're going to continue in the theme of for finances for the month of September. And we're going to continue with, um, we're going to continue with for the love of money, for the love of money. And I want to go to God in prayer because it's always appropriate to um, just saturate yourself, just saturate yourself in the word of God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now just saying glory, oh God. We thank you for this day, this day that has been coming since the very foundation of the earth, O oh God. And we thank you. We thank you that you seem fit to allow us to be here on this very day, O oh God. See, some of us are going through all manner of trials and tribulation, but down through the years, you saw fit for us to be right here on September 15, 2021. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you that this is the day that you've made. And we thank you so much that we declare and decree that even though it's raining outside, even though we're going through our own personal struggles, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we give your name praise on tonight. I ask right now that you decrease me, that you may increase God. So there is none of Ashanti. And it's all about you, God. Stir up the gift from the inside. Help me, Holy Ghost. This is our prayer in Jesus' name, and it's sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So tonight we're, we're continuing with For the Love of Money. And I, I just want to um, kind of go start off like I did on last week um, on a Sunday for Sunday school. And um, I wanted to talk about there is a song um, by a popular R&B group that just hit the nail on the head. And um, some of us, some of us old people, we, we know this group as the Mighty OJs. And so they had this song called
called For the Love of Money. And I want to read to you some of the lyrics from, from the song. It, it reads like this. For the love of money, people will steal from their mother. For the love of money, people will rob their own brother. For the love of money, people can't even walk the street because they never know who in the world they're going to beat for that lean, mean, mean green, all right? We're talking about money, all right? For the love of money, this is all Jay's talking here. They said people will lie, Lord have mercy, they will cheat. For the love of money, people don't care who they hurt or beat. For the love of money, help me Father, a woman will sell her precious body for a small piece of paper it carries a lot of weight, and we call it lean, mean, mean green. I know money is the root of all evil. Do funny things to some people. Give me a nibble, brother, can you spare a dime? Money can drive some people out of their minds. Go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6, and I'm going to... Um, be reading around verse number 6 through verse 10. That's 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. And the word of God reads just like this. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we will carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But that that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many, many sorrows. I read to you 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. The word of God is already blessed. And so we're, we're continuing this talk on the love of money. And um, we, we know that we live in this society where it is all consuming. It's all about consumers. You know, how you know we, we get money so that we can spend money. And so we live in this capitalistic society where it's based on consumerism, you know, just continuing to purchase, 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 just, it just acquire so many things. And in order to uh, purchase these things, it requires money. And so when we as consumers become obsessed with purchasing things, we in turn become obsessed with gaining and receiving money to purchase those things. And so we find ourselves in a perpetual state of not being content. Just not, not ever being satisfied, not ever enjoying what God has blessed us with. And so on tonight, we're talking about how the love of money, not money itself, because money is neutral. Money could either be used for good or it could be used for bad. So it's not money that is a problem that we're, we're addressing on tonight or addressing this week. It's the love of money, this greedy, um, just lustful, pursuit of money that is a problem. This love of money, it, it is a way of putting us in a trap. And we know that anytime you fall into a trap, you have, you will find yourself in the midst of inherent dangers. I want to read to you from Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, and it reads like this. 
Bless the Lord. Praise God. The word of God reads like this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. And so one of the things that, that the themes that we're trying to lift up in this week's lessons is that if you have chosen to pursue money with everything you have, yes, I know we have to work jobs. I know that we have bills and families and utilities and all of these responsible responsibilities that require finances. There's nothing wrong with that. We, we are responsible for taking care of the things that God has given us. But when we get in a hot pursuit where it is driven by, by greed or jealousy or, or any manner of, 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 of something that is deeply rooted in sin, that's when we start to see these proverbial pitfalls. And so tonight, I want to talk about if we find ourselves entrapped or entangled in a mindset that's focused on the love of money, just pursuing a greed and desperation, how we can get free from that trap. And so I have five, five principles that, if, that are going to help us rethink how we think about money. And if we are struggling with the love of money, we can get free tonight. So, the first thing I want us to um, think about, if you want to be free from, um, from the love of money, the first thing that we're going to have to do is pursue godliness. Yes, we have to pursue God godliness. And I want you to think about um, I want you to think about a weight uh, or scale. And if you have you have the concept of being wealthy on one side, and the concept of being godly on the other side, what we really want to do is really examine how our lifestyles, how our behaviors are affecting the scale. Now. If, if, if we um, are heavy on the godly side, that means we're doing things like pursuing God and, and we're following his commandments and, and we are holding up his statutes. If we're heavy on the wealthy side, we want to do what thus says the Lord and we're seeking him first. Amen? If we're heavy on the wealthy side, we are kingdom focus kingdom minded and that's where we want to be you want your your godly side to weigh that scale down now if we look on the other side and the 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 wealthy side has more weight i think it's time for us to have a discussion i think it's time for us to really think about what we value and if we value wealth and gaining possessions and all of these things, something is off. And we have perhaps made wealth or money or tangible things our God. And so we serve a jealous God and God, will, he will not be placed on the same level as any other God. Any other idols that you try that we lift up to God's level, we have a problem because what ends up happening is God begins to move his hand of protection from our lives. And when he moves his hands of protection from our lives, the good and perfect gifts that God has stored up for us, though that, that flow ceases. But here's the other thing. You'll start realizing that no matter what you do, to gain that money, when it's not done the godly way, it starts to fall through your fingers. 
You're not doing it the right way if you're if you're not gaining money the right way, if you're not managing money the right way, if you're not spending and spending and giving and tithing, if you're not doing, if you're not treating finances in a way that's pleasing to God, that money will run through your fingers as if you never had it. You can't, you won't be able to show anything for the money you were able to acquire. That quick money. That, that money that caused you to abandon your families, leave your family members unattended, chasing a dollar, being a workaholic, or even out in the streets gaining it illegally, illicitly, that money will go so fast, it will go as quickly as it came. And so God will be pleased with that. So what we have to do is to pursue godliness. I want to read to you Romans chapter 12, Verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And it reads like this. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be, you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So as we're pursuing godliness, we need to be checking in with God and, and consulting him for every single thing that we do. We really want to make sure that God is at the center and the forefront of our lives. The second principle is learn some contentment. We got to learn some contentment. And so what does that mean? When, when I go back to, to our scripture, it tells us in verse 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. See, the first two principles were found in the uh, verse number six. If you want to have great success, if you want to really ex ex experience just the favor of God, two things you need to put at the forefront of your lives. That's godliness and contentment. We got to learn how to be content. When we are the recipients of God's blessings, we got to pause and show some gratitude. And I'm, I'm not talking about like a quick, thank you, God, for this blessing. No, like staying in, in a perpetual state of thanksgiving. And I mean by thanksgiving, thanking God for everything, not just the big things, but the things that show up every single day that you have no control over. And sometimes we take for granted, like the breath that you breathe in and breathe out. The fact that you're able to get up and walk across the room with no assistance. The fact that you are in your right mind. We need to be in a state of perpetual thanksgiving. I used to hear uh, Charlene sing the song, every day is a day of thanksgiving. Like every single day, no matter how bad your day is going, how tough it is, how heavy it is, there's always something to thank God for. So we want to be grateful. We want to show that we're grateful. But even in whatever it is that God gives us, learn how to be satisfied. And, and don't, don't get it twisted. I am not saying not to have goals. I am not saying to not have dreams and, and um, things that you're working towards. But stop and slow down. We just live in such a microwave society where we want to just move fast, fast, fast. I think it's time for us to get back to a crock pot type of mindset. Slow it all the way down and just bask in the glory and the goodness of God. You know, I, I think it's really, I think it's really disrespectful for us to receive a gift from God say thank you, and throw it over to the side like it doesn't even matter. Every time your feet hit the floor, you should be saying thank you, God. Every morsel that goes inside of your mouth, glory to God, because we all know there are people who have absolutely nothing to eat. Thank God for that little piece of car you have. Yeah, you might have to get it jumped off, but you have a vehicle to get from point A to point B. And perhaps, just maybe, if we start showing gratitude and, and showing that we are satisfied, 
just maybe God will go ahead and release that blessing that he already has in store for us. Amen, somebody? We have to remember that God's grace is sufficient. Here's the thing. If he never does another thing, I mean, not a single thing, I need you to understand that God is good. He's already done enough. He doesn't owe us anything, but he's faithful. And he's the giver of good and perfect gifts. Amen? Principle number three, we need to develop an eternal perspective. Listen, you can gain much throughout this, this, this thing called life. But the truth of the matter is, you're not taking any of it with you. Mm -hmm. You're not taking anything with you. I'm not saying once you get it, just go ahead and blow it because you're, um, you're not going to be able to take it. But just really have a mindset on... How would God have me to use the resources that he's placed in my possession? So you're the beneficiary of these possessions. God wants to use you as a Not only are you a beneficiary, you're also a benefactor. God will use you to bless somebody else. And here's the thing. When you trust God, and he, he, he sees that you trust him, God will show you that he trusts you. You cannot be God-giving. The more you give, the more he gives you. Because he can trust you. So we have to have those kingdom minds. Are we looking out for the widows? Are we looking out for the orphans, the sick, the shut-in? Are we taking care of the people in our own families? How dare us try to um, just be people pleasers and and give to people so that we can stick our chests out and our own families are neglected at home. Your family is your first ministry. Take care of your home and make sure that we are doing the things that God's called us to do. Matthew 6 and 19. Matthew 6. Let me go back. Matthew 6, 19 and 20, it reads like this. Glory to God. Glory to God. 6, 19 and 20. Lay not up for yourselves treasures up, up on earth. Okay, no store of your treasures on earth. Where moth and rust corrupts your, your things, your belongings. And where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust corrupts, and where thieves do not break through, nor steal. Where's your heart? Where, where's your mind focus? Are, 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 you, are you looking towards the hills from which cometh your help? Do you realize that the joy of the Lord is your strength? Are you working on that heavenly place? See, there is some, sometimes we just live a life just all wild and rogue like nothing is going to happen to us. We have to make sure that we always have heaven at the forefront of our minds. Now God is, he's a forgiving God and, 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 and he's gracious, but he is the God of judgment. And I don't know if we want to run the risk of judgment day and not being fully saved. We have to keep an eternal perspective at the forefront of our minds. Principle number four, learn to live simply. You know, we have, there's so much around us. It, it, there, we just, we have access to so much. We are living lives that our grandparents and great, great grandparents and great, great, great grandparents never could have imagined. And sometimes we, we find ourselves thinking, if I could all back to when I was a child, life would be so much better. What you're really saying is those simpler times, those simpler times, you know, you were freed up to enjoy what God gave you and you can thank him freely. But sometimes we get consumed and we're obsessed with things and stuff and busyness. God out. And there's no room for him in our lives. We got to get away from that. We got to free ourselves up. And I'm telling you right now, 
You know, the, the, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Distraction is the new destruction. If the enemy can keep you busy, you will be on a road to destruction. And sometimes we think busyness, booked and busy, staying busy, I'm on the go, I got this, I got that, everyone calling, I'm setting up, you know, I'm gigging this. All of that is fine and good. But if you're so busy where you cannot do what God has called you to do, that is a distraction. And that distraction leads to destruction. Which also leads me to the next, the, the very next one, the very, the very last one. Because to live simply means that we got to, here's the thing, we have to distinguish or differentiate between wants and needs. When you, when you have your, your, your income or resources come to you, when God gives you with things, you have to decide when you're dispersing and spending and, and, and you know, doing these different things, are you placing those resources in an area of a want or a need? That goes back to that scale I was talking about. Are you focusing on godliness or wealth? Okay? All right? And so not only do we need to focus on wants or needs, we also need to be very disciplined. Very disciplined. Here recently, um, I went into a store and I saw a dress that I really liked. Uh, I love the dress. And I knew the um, I knew by the, the brand that I didn't have to try on the dress because I know when I get that name brand that a certain size is going to fit me. So I liked the dress. I knew it was going to fit me. It was in my little budget. And I marched myself right on up to the cash register. I got all the way home. I got a dress almost identical to that dress. That's not discipline. That's not discipline. I didn't need the dress. I wanted that dress. But it's foolish because I already had that dress. We gotta be careful. Discipline. And see, here's the thing. When we bring the word to you, it hits us first. I'm telling you that I made a foolish decision because I wasn't disciplined. The dress didn't cost a lot of money. I showed up, didn't need it. And when I got home, it was revealed to me that my ignorance led me to spend money that I had no business spending. It was foolish. And I showed a lack of discipline and maturity in doing that. We also have to understand that sacrifice is the name of the game. While I'm spending money on a dress that I don't need, that I've already purchased, somebody as a baby probably needed diapers and formula. I could have been blessing somebody else, but I'm trying to fill up my closet. I hope I'm making sense to somebody. Somebody else needed that money that I was willing to give to a retailer. Somebody's family probably needed that money for food. Some, a co-worker may have needed that money for their gas tank. And I am purchasing, making a frivolous, nonsensical purchase with God's money. He can't bless me like that. And so I have to repent and ask God for forgiveness. The last one, recognize the danger of desiring money in an ungodly way. So we have to make sure that we understand that the love of money causes people to fall into temptation and into traps. And when you fall into these traps, it's so easy to fall in the trap, but it's so hard to get out of it. Got to be careful that we know that desiring can lead to the danger of many senseless and harmful desires. When we do one thing wrong, it's so easy to do the next thing wrong. It's like a domino effect. It's like a snowball effect. It's just so easy. Once you get out there, if you're not careful, you just keep going and going and it becomes very senseless. And it's selfish. And it's hurtful to the body of Christ. And finally, just really desiring money in the wrong way without God's direction and his guidance 
It plunges us into ruin and into destruction. People have lost homes and families, spouses, children, their livelihoods for an unhealthy pursuit of money. We're just talking about the love of money, not money itself because it's neutral. And money has its purpose. But we have to develop a kingdom mindset when it comes to the management of the resources that God gives us. I hope I have helped someone on today. God certainly chastised me with this word on this week. Um, and so at this time, we're going to turn it over for a closing song, and we'll come back for prayer.
um, Minister Moore and, and, and Chris Nelson that they are helping to spread the gospel through the technology department to the four corners of the earth. We thank God right now for the opportunity to freely praise him and glorify him and teach his holy word. And I personally would like to thank my pastor, my spiritual father, for allowing me the opportunity to stand on his platform, to have his support, and for him to trust me with his sheep. We thank you. We love you. We hope you have a blessed night. God bless you. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for all that he has done tonight.